The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 656 Nightmares and Harmony Valet burst above the edge of the cliff, ready to see what she could do to break things up without losing control of the situation below. She quickly surveyed the situation. Six Cerosians remained against seven or eight Varsidelians, but two of the bad ponies were completely down and one looked like she was fighting just to stay on her hooves. She set her teeth as the Varsidelians instantly saw her. This was going to be painful. Hey! Do you understand me? She dropped into the fray, inserting herself between two struggling stallions with a twirl and forcing them apart. That means you, she added, glaring at as many Varsidelians as she could. Stop fighting! An elegant offer of surrender, another stallion grunted, targeting her with a shoulder shove. As if you'd even think about sparing the likes of us. Valet popped him on the chin with the lightest of punches, spinning and decking a merchant who had caught a bad pony in a frantic struggle, forcing them to roll away. Might have something to do with you throwing a net at them, she hissed, forced to stay moving by the sheer volume of misaimed attacks flying around. Really should have thought about learning to speak their language or something, but I can't tell them to run, so you're gonna have to do it instead. She punctuated the last word by rolling underneath another stallion and flipping him prone, but before she could get a response, a bad pony dove past her, trying to pounce on the downed enemy. Nope! No, no, no! Valet caught them by the shoulders, glaring into their eyes with her best stop fighting look. You guys run too! The Cerosian gave her a hurt, angry look, though some of the shock from earlier was wearing off. Valet noticed the bad ponies still weren't targeting her as much as the Varsidelians were, but if things didn't change, that would in a hurry. She frantically glanced around, looking for a better plan. Yeah, we're not leaving, the stallion she had accosted earlier puffed, facing her for a moment until another bad pony caught him off guard. That would mean leaving our injured to their- Ugh! A nasty left hook hit his side and Valet winced. Fortunately, there was an idea. Hey, bozos! She leaped, flipping through the air and clearing the heads of most of the brawlers toward where the fallen Varsidelians lay. Three were down, plus a fourth who was obviously conscious but could barely move. And you! She locked eyes with the wounded stallion. What do you say I help some of you dudes a little closer to camp and that makes all your buddies either chase me or trust me, huh? Come on, I need a retreat option. There was a loud crack overhead and suddenly... Felicity screamed again. Baring her teeth in a helpless snarl, Valet vanished in a blink, leaving the downed ponies in place and flying fast for the beach. In less than a second, she cleared a cliff edge to see the fallen Varsidelians having actually backed off, staring upwards in surprise, and a chunky boulder where her friends had been resting. Bananas! Valet dove for the rock. Sparky! Felicity! Before she could even pull up, Felicity surfaced, gasping for breath as she was ejected from the rock's shadow. Shinespark and the round mare were each clutched under one wing, the former now barely conscious. Felicity stared at Valet with panicking eyes, too winded to speak. Where'd that thing come from? Valet hissed, grabbing both of their shoulders, then looking back at the Varsidelians. All of her eyes were fixed skyward, and if she focused, she could hear Gerardo's intercom above the battle, but not make out. Her eyes widened too, a full ten Cerosians dropping rapidly from the cloud layer. Some of their flights were unsteady, one even looked recently bloodied, but they had both numbers and surprise swiftly falling on the beach for Sedelians in the blink of an eye. Two of them crashed, but most swooped past with flyby attacks, one dropping a small carried stone at an earth pony's head. Before the Varsidelians could so much as grab at them with telekinesis to react, the Cerosians were up and over the cliff, earning panicked shouts as they joined the fight above. Knock it off! Knock it off! Knock that off! Valet whirled forward on another rescue mission, trying to force the Varsidelians away from the Cerosians stuck in their midst before any beatings could begin. Kicking Ray's hooves away, shoving ponies back with her shoulders, sides, and rear, Valet avoided lethal or bone-breaking strikes, making it to the first downed bat pony. Their eyes contracted in fear and confusion, and her cutie mark was too busy warning about everything to tell her if they would attack too. Back off! Back down the beach! Valet spread her wings, pushing the Varsidelians instead. 
Felicity, she hollered over her shoulder. I need these two immobilized just in case. I've got to get up there and save. New battle cries rang out from above and her ears folded at the sound of Cerosian screams. Darling, I'm about to pass out myself. Uh, Felicity staggered forward, looking sick. Another sharp crack rang out from above, and Valet looked up in time to see a boulder strike the hull of the immortal dream. She didn't have time to gauge where it would fall. She dove at Felicity, catching her with both forehooves and propelling her back towards Shinespark. Nyah! Sparing a precious second to set her down gently, Valet zoomed to the top of the cliff, unable to spend any more time on the two fallen bat ponies and hoping they didn't get up or continue fighting. The scene at the top was even more desperate than it had been before. Both sides held a large influx of ponies, but the Varsidelians had crude weapons, and most importantly, Granada. A roughly fashioned spear pierced the Cerosian's ear, narrowly missing their eye and earning a shrill scream. Valet set her target and her eyes, blasting forward into a barrel roll that kicked two Varsidelians and a bat pony apart, seizing their weapons and hurling them at the sea. Like a fuzzy, green mane pinball, she ricocheted through the crowd, not caring how hard she kicked chests and faces for momentum as she stole every implement she could get her hooves on, disposing of them in similar fashion. But there were too many of them, and some of the Cerosians had the same idea, stealing weapons for themselves. Yo! Valet pounced on Granada instead, her momentum-tearing furrows beneath the mare's hooves in the ground. Call this off and sound a retreat right now! Granada gave her an angry look. And abandon the best chance we have had to win this land once and for all? You have my thanks for luring them into an easy ambush, but we still will have nothing to do with you. Without even a grunt, Valet drove her hoof into Granada's unarmored face, then flipped above and behind her and slammed her face first into the dirt. Granada's horn tried to light and she put a hoof atop it, blocking the aura by pressing it into the ground. She struggled, but had no way to get her forelegs beneath her, and Valet looked up, spreading her wings and raising her voice as loud as it would go. Hey! Lemon bags! Everybody scram right now or I'm gonna start making friends and I have your boss! Count of free! She turned a few heads, but the message in everyone's eyes was the same. We kill the Sarosians or they kill us. Not one of Valet's racial kin looked ready to give in, despite limps, bruises, slashes, and fresh scars on every one of them. There wasn't anything she could say, because none of these merchants wanted to die. The sky shook again as another boulder impacted the immortal dream, earning more cries of warning from the beach. Fortunately, she didn't hear any sounds of combat. Yet. Bananas, no! Valet's ears pressed back, and by reflex, she smashed Granada's muzzle harder into the dirt. Why would you do this? Why would you want to stay here? The locals can talk if you try. You could have made peace. There's gotta be a way to let you leave in peace. Bananas, why isn't there anything better I can do? Fighting is what I'm meant for. Stop this. Someone, anyone, please. A magical pressure appeared in her chest like a gentle force was asking to come in. Valet recognized it instantly. The Firefly Sisters? A Dusk Statue? The Night Mother? But the former were in the Empire and the Bad Ponies had said there were no Dusk Statues here, that they lived in exile or separation from the Goddess. Then how? The Cerosians clearly felt it too, a wave of synchronized hesitation sweeping across their faces as one. Then every last one who could stand fell prostrate, ears pressed back in terror and shame as they abandoned the battle, not a single thought spared for their well-being. That works. Vlaik cut to her hooves, refusing the presence like she had every time she felt it before. Bananas, if this is a night mother, she might actually have herself a convert. All right, Mox. She stared the Varsidelians down, keeping Granada's head pinned against the earth with a single hindhoof. They're sparing you! Get your wounded and go home! The first pony who harms a single hair on any of their heads gets to find out if I can launch them above the cloud layer with uppercuts alone. Savvy? 
Murmuring swept across the Varsidelians. A few arguments risked breaking out, but no one was stupid enough to act on them, with the ponies who had actually been to Iron Ridge strongly reminding their companions who they were up against. I'm not going to let them fight you either, Valet insisted. Your dumb leader here is getting tied up and deposed, but we're going to find a way to get you your boat and let you all go home. Whoever's suicidal enough to stay, now's your chance to try it. The Varsidelians looked at each other harder until one of the group's few mares hung her head, muttered an apology under her breath, pulled an unconscious pony onto her back, and slunk away. Like a dam had been broken, the other Varsidelians started to warily leave, gathering their wounded and backing away with all eyes on Valet. Emboldened, when the prone Sarosians didn't get up or give chase, their retreat quickened, and suddenly Granada was the only non-bat pony on the clifftop. There was a rush of feathers, and Gerardo Guillaume landed beside her. What? What happened? he asked, ogling the Sarosians. Did you succeed? How? I hoped you wouldn't be dumb enough to bring this down here, Valet sighed, grabbing the black sword from its sheath at Gerardo's sides. Hello, confusing melee with lots of bat ponies. Like me? She held it in a wing, looking down at Granada's struggling form. I need to get down there as fast as possible, especially if that dumb trebuchet fires again. Help me get her armor off so I don't damage it. We're going to mobilize her legs so she can't run since the effects are sort of local, and then cap her horn, tie her up, haul her back to the ship, and... Mm, I don't know. This is going to be rough and sparky. Granada grunted, pouring an enraged, desperate whine into the ground. Fear and lack of control radiated from her hard enough that Valet could almost feel a sting in her throat. Indeed, Gerardo quickly produced a ring and a roll of tape from a pocket on his uniform, grabbing Granada's head and wrapping her horn. It fizzled with sparks as she tried to light it to no avail. Without either air or encasement and a proper conductor, there was no way for a unicorn to activate her corona, and without the light around her horn, spellcasting was impossible. Sweet! Valet stepped back as Gerardo got to work on the armor, more than a match for Granada without her magic. Squawk if she sucker punches you or something. I got friends to see to. On the beach below, the Varsidelians hadn't yet retreated, though they looked ready to. The two crashed Sarosians were both immobilized near Felicity, and Valet guessed it was because they had tried something on Shine Spark. Felicity herself was on her side, breathing shallowly, and all the merchants watched them with guarded fear. Yo! Valet dropped down slowly, furling her wings and hoping as she looked disarming. Battle's over. You dudes go home. Your boss is deposed, so if anyone sees harsh water, tell her she's in charge. And if any of you feel like having a promotion, we're gonna get negotiating, and you'll need someone in charge. A stallion at the front of the posse slowly nodded. We will spread the word. Please don't attack again. Valet wanted to retort that they had started it, but that wouldn't help anything at all. Forcing herself to bow, she watched and waited for them to leave. Eventually, the crunching of stones against hoofsteps vanished behind the sound of lapping water and a point where the cliff face curved out of sight, and Valet sighed, tension finally starting to drain. Sparky? Felicity? She stepped over to her friends, feeling emotionally exhausted and badly in need of a nap. Valet, Shinespark groaned, sounding better than her scorched chest fur indicated. Bananas, are you two all right? Valet quickly decided Felicity looked worse, though the round mare she had saved wasn't in good shape either. Felicity! C quiet, darling, Felicity breathed, badly overexerted and eyes thin. I very badly need to rest. Yeah, Valet breathed, settling in beside her. You do that. Carefully, Valet lay down, knowing the stones were a terrible bed and picked up Felicity's head, holding her ears flat against her head for quiet. Felicity closed her eyes in appreciation, and Shinespark gave Valet a quiet nod of approval. Give me five minutes, she mouthed, and I can fly us back up. A short distance away, laying nearby on the stones, 
The free local Sarosians lay, the round leader disabled by her injuries, and the others looking locked up for mystery of arts. Valet could see their eyes. All three were crying, and all three were humming in harmony a tune. She remembered from a night long ago in his Valdi. End of chapter 656